All right, we're recording. I hereby call this meeting to order of the Shade Tree Commission, <clears throat> and it's being record. It, it's being recorded in accordance with the governor's executive order seven B. So that's what I have to say there. Um, the second, the the that was the first agenda item. And is there any public comment? Let me, let me actually first introduce all of us individuals that are participating in the meeting. Myself, I'm Corey Christians, I'm the tree warden. And could you guys go around, can the gravers go first and then you mark? Just in Bruce Graver. Mark Alfred. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment? Seeing no public comment, I move on to um, item number three, old business, which is to approve the March mid minutes. The March minutes being our last, you know, most recent meeting. Um, uh, is there any discussion or, or can I get a motion to approve the, mi the March minutes? I make a motion to um, pass the minutes. It's uh, very good. Is there a second? I a see second. a second. Alex Graver, or I see a second Alex Graver. Uh, all in favor, um, say aye. 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 I see that the motion passes. Thank you for bearing with me through this. Uh, this formality type of stuff. Um, item number four is new business, and we have one thing uh, for review. I can kind of give a brief description first, and then we could we could talk about it. Item uh, the new business item is a discussion regarding the declining Norway maple at or near 69 State Street. It's out front, visible from State Street. Um, the tree is showing a lot of dead wood and um, it's declining, you know, it's from the top down. Um, I feel that it's a hazard to the public and I don't think it's gonna become healthy again. And uh, in posting it, it has been posted, I, I forget the exact date, but we'll make sure it's 10 days if we cut it. Um, uh, the, the the wife, I forget their names there, They she did call me and she was very interested in preserving the tree. So I wanted to, I didn't get a written, I didn't get a written uh, request um, appealing, appealing the posting, but it was, it was a over the phone verbal and, and she would really not like to see the tree cut down. Are there any, is anyone that would like to speak on that? I would like to make a comment on that. Several years ago, my father died. I didn't like to see him go, but he had to go. This tree has to go. It's a, it's a public health problem. Anybody else? I just stopped by and looked at it and uh, it didn't look to me like it's gonna go anywhere but downhill. I agree. Did you have anything, uh, Alex? No, I, I agree with everything they're saying. It's just too far gone. It's dying from the top down, and there's just it's a sugar maple and no, Norway. Norway Norway maple, and you know I just it doesn't look hot, too hot right now. Yeah, it seems it to me it was an easy decision. I was a little surprised at having some resistance with it, but. Uh, you know, an older couple that has seen that tree there for sounds like the tenure of their of their owning the home, and uh, just just broken hearted to see would be broken hearted to see it go. Um, it would be if we removed it. It would be a priority for uh, it would be a goal for for us to replant the area. Um, let's say within a year or so. Um, 
you know, I think, I think it's, I think it would be a little outside of a boricultural norms to prune it, but I think it would be, it would be possible to, to make it safe for, for a, a short while longer. Any, uh, is, is there any interest? I mean, it, I think to all of us, you know, knowing what we see and, and how trees are and all that, I think it is, and I think it does seem like a no brainer. And I was anticipating you guys would, would agree, but um, any thoughts on, on pruning out the dead just to, uh, just to make a resident satisfied that it won't be for another year or so? I was looking at it, wondering what could be done. And to me, to make anything that looks good or looks okay, you'd have to make it a lot smaller to make it symmetrical. It would be kind of crazy looking. Right. To try to prune out the dead stuff and make it symmetrical, you have to make a really small tree out of that thing with big, big limbs. That's my opinion. Yeah. All right. In other words, like you, your first comment was um, you're very surprised to, to see resistance in that, and I, and I am too. Uh, because uh, usually people would see a tree like that and say, well, let's move on and get rid of the tree and plant a new one and uh, be done with it. Because it's also going to be ugly, like Mark says. Uh, you'd have to do a, a, a waste of the resources of Weathersfield to try to make that tree nice. You better put it into the removal and get a new tree over there, Corey. All right. I mean, what are you saying it's going to take a year? I don't understand that comment. Okay, maybe I wasn't all the way uh, communicative on that. Um, the, the resident, the resident for my memory, um, said to me that she'd like to see it wait another year or two. Something to the tune oh. of, oh, just don't do it quite yet. I, you know, I can't. I can't, you know, it was just wanting to kind of buy some time, seemed like. Doesn't it have deadwood? So you got to go back there twice? You got to cut the, de the dangerous deadwood? Yeah. Let's kill somebody first and wait a year? I don't understand that. Well, I mean, if we did go the court, like, if we did go the course of pruning it, which I think, I think would be, um, I think we could make it safe. And, and I also think that making it safe would really compromise its looks, but it would preserve, you know, the, the, the shade element to the property and to passerbys and it would, you know, save us the effort of, of having to do as big a removal, even though, you know, we all know, you know, it's a, it's, it's a hassle to remove deadwood from over top live branches when it's easier for stuff to, you know, first be removed at the bottom and then work your way up the tree, you know. Well, then I would have to uh, defer that to you, Corey. You're the tree warden. If you think make it safe and you, and you want to do it that way and go to the tree uh, twice, then, then go for it. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. But my vote would be to take the tree down and get it over with. Sure. Like, and, and plant, no, and plant something that you've been having a, a wonderful planting program, and move forward with the town like you have been doing. You know, yeah, uh, but that's that's your call. You know, yeah. but if no, I were to vote on the tree tonight, I wouldn't vote to prune it. You know, right. I'd yeah. to remove. It. But if uh, you think you could make it safe, uh, you know, because you you got internal internal decay here when the top is dying back. That means all the rest of the tree could be compromised, whether it's live or not. You know, it could be weak in there. So, I mean, you got to figure that too. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. But, I, you know. Was there something else? What? I thought somebody started talking, sorry. Want to make a comment, Mark? What do you think about that? Uh, when I looked at it today, I thought it would just have to come down, not because you know it's dying tomorrow, but just because it's. I didn't see any way to make that tree look good and uh, think that it would ever come back and be healthy. So I figured it's just right. eventually, it's so, eventually going to go sooner rather than later. I thought. Right. 
Right. So, Mark, your idea of making it, you know, cut it back severely to make it into a, uh, a good shape is, is not a bad idea because then Corey could take the weight off of there and, and still keep the tree, and now you're making it halfway safe, you know? But that's a lot of work. That's a lot of man hours and a lot of money spent on a tree you're going to have to take down next year. So that's all I'm saying. So in these tough times, you know, you got to weigh that situation too. Like I started with my comment, first of all, I didn't like when our close family members get old and have to die, but that's what happens. The tree is old and it's dying. I don't like it when my father died. I don't like it one bit, but he died, okay? That's the way it is. These people like the tree. The town likes the tree. But you got to make a decision. But, Corey, I'll defer to you what you want to do. I think, I think it would be good to get a decision as to whether or not tonight we would be for or against the removal of the tree. And what I will probably do is wait the 10 days and assuming that we vote in favor of allowing it to be a removal, I'll go into it um, with the approach that we might be able to just prune it, but we'll, de we'll be there um, being able to make a game time decision as to whether it's reasonable to be able to prune the tree out or if it needs to come all the way down because as we're, as we're doing some cutting and pruning, if it doesn't seem like something that you know, if there if there's new if there if if, if upon that closer inspection, there's there's new information as to why the tree is even is even more dangerous than is than is apparent from a ground inspection. Then we'll be just ready to continue on in removing it. But maybe we go into it with the with the head on our shoulders of let's let's see if there's something here to keep for this resident's preferences. You know what I mean? And it does save us some time in the short term of having a stump where we get a stump grind. We got to have the wood moved instead of just being able to do it by chipping. We got to, you know, do the soil. We got to go replant. We got to buy a tree. We got to water it. It does kind of save us in some ways in our logistics to be able to hang on to the tree for longer, even if we kind of know it's going to die. And, uh, and sort of and sort of push the all the effort it is to do the wood moving and the stump grinding, the big cutting and the replanting, push it down the road a little bit if, you know, because we all we all want the big stately shade trees to be around, you know what I mean? And, well, I'll go along with that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because if I had to vote on this uh, uh, a tree tonight, Corey, I'd make a motion to take it down, of course. Yeah. But if you want to yeah. prune the prune the stuff out, you may see immediately that a holy mackerel, there's a big hollow spot when you're starting to cut up there. And we've right. done the same on our jobs. We, we right. go to prune the tree and we see it's a really compromised and we got to stop the job completely, you know, yeah. and assess it. So yeah. that's a good strategy. I'll go along with that. I think it's one of those, I think it's one of those trees that you sort of know if you're pruning it or taking a cut on it at all. It's it's a tree that's sort of in hospice, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but it just might be, you know, to speak to your your deceased relative's comment, you know. But, uh, you know, maybe we can make it safe for even like two or three years or something like that. You know what I mean? Before, okay. the, before it, you know, but the cavities aren't going to form overnight or even in a year or so uh, it, with, with, big, with big cuts on, on small suckers and stuff like that. And uh, and maybe maybe the maybe the foliage doesn't doesn't recede quite as quickly as we think. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Just to kind of play devil's advocate on the situation, even though to me, I, you know, I wouldn't have posted it if I didn't think it was was kind of ought to be a removal. You know what I mean? But if we can hang on to it, even with you know, if it's a little more effort, then you know. You know, you try to you try to say these 50-50 situations, like maybe we, we see if we can do something for the resident, that kind of thing. But yeah, so generally I agree with you guys. So what should we do, vote on it to prune it for now? Or are you gonna handle I, it? I would like to vote on whether or not we think it should be removed 
and just sort of go into it, as I said, with, with the idea that <clears throat> we have permission to remove this tree, yet maybe we can just prune it, you know, and we'll sort of put our, you know, we'll, we'll bring, we'll bring our, our pruning eye and school of thought with us in the morning, but it could change to a removal like we have to, our hand is forced by these situations of, of structure and, and decline and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Oh, did, you, did you post the tree already? Yeah, yeah, I posted it. We, okay. we don't, we're not just talking about one that, you know, you know so, yeah, sometimes we talk about one where, you know, it's not, it's not so convincing and I might not post it kind of, kind of with the thought of, we don't need to notify the public, um, that, you know, that, that we're interested in removing this tree. You know, if, if a, sometimes like when a resident wants the tree removed, but I'm sort of seeing it the other way and saying it doesn't need to come down, we'll talk about it, but I won't post it, or at least not until after the meeting, you know what I mean? Okay, sounds good to me. So I'll make a motion to remove the tree. Uh, uh, Is there a second? Second. Or did you, I'm sorry, did you want to continue uh, saying your motion? Well, I don't know if I should make a motion to um, uh, remove the tree and leave it at that and, and leave it as uh, if Corey could go maybe prune it, pending pruning. Or something. Doesn't sound like a clear motion. Yeah, it doesn't sound too clear. What are you then, saying right? then? Are you want to prune it or remove it? Right, I second right. to remove it. So I, I make a motion to remove the tree. I second the motion to remove the tree. All in favor, raise your hand. I see. Uh, can I get your verbal decision, Mark? I see your hands, Gravers. Yeah, for removal. So unanimously, the four of us are uh, are voting that we would be willing to remove the tree. All right. All right, um, that's all I had for for new business, you know, and I wanted to kind of keep it short in the interest of maybe this Zoom meeting wouldn't be wouldn't be all that amazing, but we're I think we're doing pretty good, you know, <laughs> staying organized, I guess. Num um, number five is March work completed. Essentially in front of me, the agenda is March work completed is number five, April work completed is number six, and May work completed is number seven. Oh, and we have an eight June work completed, of course, it's July. So comments, questions on, on any of those things? I just would point out that there's less that we accomplished in those earlier months in the, you know, we were probably still dealing with snow a little bit. Um, but also physical service, like Weathersfield physical services was not, not um, was half staff, you know, through the, through some, a few months up until Memorial Day. So that why, that's why there's a much shorter list of completed work in, I think it was March and then April, April um, and, and May. So then June you got going Everybody came back pretty much the month of June. Everyone came back following Memorial Day for for a full forty hours. Yes, and um, yeah, I mean it's a pretty big laundry list. I think a lot of them were 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 small things a lot of times. Did um, you have your crew? What's your crew now, Corey? Me and one guy. So, Jeez. yeah. Oh, the, one guy never came back. Is that it? No, we've always been just is in my tenure of six years or so, five or six yeah. years. It's always been a two-person tree tree crew, except for some exceptions when we'll get assistance from, for example, the highway department on uh, on wood moving and occasionally. You know, some extra help shipping or brush clearing or something like that. But it's, it's did you it's help uh, normal. help the town of Newington or Rocky Hill out at all? We haven't 
Uh, we, we do have a relationship, a working relationship with Newington from the tree work perspective. And we do not have a relationship uh, the same way with Rocky Hill. We've never, the Weathersfield Physical Services has, in my, again, in my tenure has never um, been hired to Rocky Hill. You know the new guy, Newington Clay? Yeah. Nice guy. He's a nice guy. Did he hire you guys? Yeah, well, yeah, you got the console right behind that house. We've done a couple jobs for Clay. Yeah. And, and we quite a bit of work for him, you know, so. Nice. Well, good. And, and who's his boss? He's a tree warden. Who's the tree the warden? Tree warden of, the tree warden wouldn't be his, it wouldn't be Clay's boss. Um, the the tree warden is goodness Tom. Wow, the last name escapes me. Oh, okay. Who's his boss? Do you know Clay's boss? You know, I don't think I I do. I don't think I normally interact with with someone that's his superior. I he, I guess he went to tree warden school. That's why, uh, but he's not the tree warden. That's a different guy then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. but Clay, Clay's a good guy. Yes, yeah. All right. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. All in no, favor? Got oh, oh. <laughs> you got to make a motion. I'm motion to adjourn. And all I'll second. second. All right, all in favor? All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Corey. Mark. See you, Mark. Alex.